Hello YouTubers, Manny here from Manny's How To Workshop with a quick video on how I made this homemade uh, coolant pressure tester uh, just by purchasing a uh, tire gauge that you uh, normally use to check the tire on your bicycle uh, using a bicycle pump uh, some hose that I got from um, a uh, transfer pump, multi-use transfer pump from Harbor Freight I'll show you that in a second this T-fitting I had, and just so happens that this is the kind of line that goes in this. It's a compressed fitting. It's got a barb on the inside with this little nut here. Um, this is just a little tiny clamp. Um, this fitting here on this side is smooth, but it goes into this overflow hose for my radiator. Uh, and this side is barbed. That's why it makes a nice neck part. This is the existing uh, radiator overflow hose. This is the existing old radiator cap that I utilized by taking off the very bottom uh, seal, the rubber gasket, which on this one was going bad anyway. Uh, so I took that one off and cut the uh, metal piece that was down there also, but kept the top seal. To, uh, that seal is on the neck itself. So anyway, I uh, went online, checked the, everywhere. Cheapest one I found, a test kit for... I guess that does multiple vehicles, 75 bucks, but it wouldn't get here fast enough for me to be able to do this test. So went ahead and decided to make my own based on what I've seen other people try to do as well. Now this one's gonna be specific to my truck only, this Nissan Xterra 2000. Uh, the test kits obviously come with multiple fittings that you can use for different vehicles, but I need something quick and fast. So anyway, right now you can see that there's a um, zero psi is on there uh, I don't know if you can see that yeah the zero psi and this cap is rated 13 pounds 0.9 bar is 13 pounds um, just a little side note if you want to convert this to psi you multiply that number 0 0.09 uh, 0 0.9 by 14.504 it'll get you your psi rating of the cap so like I was saying I have a small pesky little leak that's coming from behind my engine I can only see it at the bottom of the engine between the oil pan and the transmission um, cover it shows up on the bottom bolt of the starter um, also at the very bottom of the oil pan and I'm trying to locate it by pressurizing the system without having to run the truck because yes two days ago in the morning when I tried I started it up ran it it was running fine and all of a sudden I look down there I had I see the dripping and then I hear the truck squealing and I'm like crap so I had to shut it off and I haven't started it since so anyway back to how I made this so I'm gonna go ahead and pressurize the system to show you that it does work and I'll be back in a second so right there I pumped it up to 14 PSI, even though my system's rated for um, 13, I figure one more PSI over is not going to be too bad, but you can see the 10 on the left, and it goes increments of 2, so from 14 it's already down to 12, and that tells you that you have a slow leak somewhere, and if this was, you know, anywhere around here like here or there or even down there and this other hose which just to verify that the system was working right I loosened this clamp a little bit pumped up the system until uh, coolant was weeping from the hose here which told me that yes the system is being pressurized through the whole uh, coolant lines going all the way down coming and that's that's my thermostat pipe right there this one and it's going through all the way to the back so anyway and look where it's at now uh, here we go it's already down to 8 psi from 14 in a matter of maybe less than a minute so it's leaking somewhere and it's not internal because I took took out the dipstick and the oil is clean. It's not milky or anything like that, so that's a good thing. It means the has gasket is still 
intact. Uh, otherwise, I would have some coolant in my, um, uh, what do you call it, <laughs> in my oil. And the transmission, it's not in my transmission because this is a new radiator. The old one had a crack right there with a plastic meets the aluminum. So this is new, but it has the built-in cooler, transmission oil cooler on the bottom. So that's new. So it's not that. But like I said, it was leaking right above the... Um, the, what do you call it the sparter so therefore it's got to be somewhere else now I'm gonna go ahead and put a little PSI here in here just so I can take the cap off and you can hear the actual uh, let me set this phone down for one second okay so I put a little bit of pressure on there it's like 5 PSI so now you can hear it when I turn this back to the off position you could hear that little bit of air coming out of there and this is what I was talking about the cap so I took the rubber seal that was down here and kept this because on the side right there when my thumb is there's a hole on this side and then on that side. So when I pump it up in here, there's a tiny little hole right there that the oil flow comes to. And that's how the air is getting in. It's getting past, getting past the spring in this coming down in here and pressurizing the system. So this is the uh, transfer pump that I was telling you guys about that I used the hose from Pittsburgh multi-use transfer pump. Comes with two of these, 51 inches long, I guess when using a transfer pump. This is also like a, a bike hand pump. Uh, you can see where it says in, out. So I, I was gonna use this right here, but it doesn't do a good seal. So when you pump it, the air comes back up here and it escapes. So it wouldn't allow the system to stay sealed. Here's the uh, tire valve that I got, uh, the extra long one. And I cut off this part right here and took that and shoved it into this line right there. Didn't even have to put a clamp on it because it was so snug. I originally had bought this fuel hose, uh, which is 5 8 yeah, 5 8 uh, OD, but like... I think three eighths a quarter inch ID but it was too small so here's the cap that came with the um, the valve so and then this is what I took off the the gauge it's just a little cover it's got the little piece in there that's screwed onto the gauge I took that off slid this line right over the rest of it and it sealed pretty good and like I said, I went ahead and bought my, a new radiator cap so I can use the old one, which is this one, to make uh, a test cap. And so if you want to do this for your vehicle, uh, this was, like I said, was cheap enough. It was like eight, nine bucks, I think it was. And instead of paying 75, you know, 100, 159, 199, I saw for these test kits. Ridiculous. But anyway, guys, that's how... I made it the uh, homemade uh, pressure tester you know, utilizing a, a bike pump and, you know, some hose. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, you're going to need a T-bar. Uh, if you hold on one second, and I'll show you uh, what you should get. Okay, so if you can find one of these, but a T with barbs on three sides, uh, and the same, this diameter here of the barb, the same as this here, a quarter inch, rather than this one. This one's only about uh, three sixteenths, I believe. You can utilize that to make your setup like I have over there that's hooked up to the truck. Um, because the one that I have over there is utilizing the same uh, hose for the overflow tank and the factory clamp. All right, and I'll show you guys again in a second. Okay, so this was our, what I was referring to. Uh, there's the factory clamp right there. That normally that would 
connect to the uh, overflow tank so and then like I said the barb on the other side of that fitting was perfect it fit right in there snug and oops, sorry finger in the way so that way you guys can still use it uh, you see they use these you know these clamps right here where you just squeeze and clamp also guys I was I put an additional o-ring see that brown o-ring right there in here so that it helped to seal right here at the top when I put this cap down in there like that so that way there the air doesn't come back up again out of it but uh, anyway that's how I made this simple um, coolant pressure tester you know, utilizing some stuff this I already had for my bike this I already had this I already had I only have bought this and uh, the valve that I showed you guys over there anyway uh, thanks for watching as always please rate comment subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so and leave me a comment down below uh, what you think about this uh, homemade cooling pressure tester thanks guys catch you on the next one